on the Eastern Front. Russia's daily advances compound Ukrainian military reporting doubts. Russian military forces under Vladimir Putin's command have continued to advance in multiple locations along the Eastern Front in Ukraine, marking significant gains in the ongoing conflict. The latest developments include a notable incursion into the northern Kharkiv region, a region that has seen relative stability since Ukraine reclaimed territory there in late summer 2022. This resurgence of Russian aggression underscores the urgent need for Kiev to bolster its ammunition and weaponry supplies, relying heavily on support from the United States and other allied nations. The tactical gains made by Russian forces are becoming a daily occurrence, demonstrating a heightened tempo on the battlefield since the fall of Abyevka in February. While these advances may seem incremental, ranging from a few hundred meters to a kilometer at most, they are occurring simultaneously in multiple strategic locations. This coordinated effort poses a significant challenge to Ukrainian defenses and exacerbates the demand for international assistance. In the Donetsk region, one of the focal points of Russian military activity Reports from Ukraine's Deep State Monitoring Group reveal Russian forces pushing forward along a 20-25 km stretch of frontline in just 24 hours. Encroachments into settlements like Semenika and Berdikai have been confirmed by Ukrainian Army Chief Oleksandr Sersky who noted the deployment of multiple Russian brigades in offensive operations in the area. Additionally, Solovyov and Karamik have fallen partially or entirely under Russian control, further illustrating the strategic gains made by Putin's forces. Further south, in the industrial town of Krasnohorivka, Russian forces are making significant headway penetrating the town from both the south and the east. The ongoing battle, particularly around the town's brick factory, is pivotal, with one Russian military blogger emphasizing the strategic importance of seizing control of key industrial facilities. In a significant development, Russian forces have made their first advancements in nearly three months along the front line that cuts into the Kharkiv region, approximately 180 kilometers to the north. Ukrainian army spokespeople have reported a notable increase in Russian activity, with deep state assessing an advance of one to two kilometers into the village of Kislivka. This breach of previously stable front lines underscores the evolving nature of the conflict and the need for heightened vigilance on Ukraine's eastern borders. Overall, Putin's forces continue to press forward, exploiting vulnerabilities and testing Ukrainian defenses across multiple fronts. As the conflict escalates, the importance of international support for Ukraine's defense capabilities becomes increasingly paramount in the face of Russian aggression. Criticism of military communications in Ukraine has intensified as withdrawals and losses mount on the battlefield. Prominent military bloggers like Myroshnikov and platforms like Deep State have raised concerns about the accuracy and transparency of official Ukrainian updates accusing the armed forces of providing overly optimistic assessments of the situation. Deep State, known for its meticulous monitoring of frontline developments, recently shared a graphic video on Telegram depicting a Russian soldier being killed in a drone strike in Solovio village. 
However, rather than focusing solely on the isolated incident, Deep State used the footage to highlight a broader issue, the discrepancy between official reports and the ground reality. Deep State argued that while Ukrainian authorities may claim control over certain areas, the presence of Russian forces in key locations tells a different story. Nazar Volashin, spokesperson for the Kortitsia Operational Strategic Group, asserted on Ukrainian television that two-thirds of Solovyov and Okaratine villages remained under Ukrainian control. However, Deep State contested this, claiming that Russian troops had maintained control over significant portions of Okaratine, including the crucial railway station, for several days. This disagreement underscores the conflicting narratives surrounding the situation on the ground. In response to mounting criticism, Ukrainian Army Chief Sersky attempted to address concerns in a post on Telegram acknowledging the fluidity of developments on the battlefield. He attributed misunderstandings to the rapid changes in positions, with control shifting multiple times a day, leading to ambiguity in assessing the situation. Nevertheless, he conceded that Ukraine's overall position had deteriorated with the enemy concentrating its efforts to seize the strategic initiative and break through the front line. Meanwhile, Russian forces have made notable advances west of Donetsk City, penetrating the industrial town of Krasnorivka from both the south and the east. This incursion highlights the ongoing challenges faced by Ukrainian forces in defending key territories against Russian aggression. Overall, the criticism of military communications reflects the complexities and uncertainties of warfare, where rapid developments and conflicting reports shape perceptions of the conflict. As the situation continues to evolve, Maintaining accurate and transparent communication becomes increasingly crucial for effectively addressing the challenges posed by the adversary. Intense combat has erupted around a sprawling brick factory, marking a pivotal battleground in the ongoing conflict. A Russian military blogger emphasized the strategic significance of this engagement stating that the capture of the refractory plant could lead to the downfall of the Krasnoverika fortification. The proximity of private buildings on the northern outskirts of the settlement renders them vulnerable in the event of losing control over the plant, highlighting the critical nature of this frontline confrontation. Amidst these developments, Concerns mount among Western analysts and Ukrainian officials who perceive Russia's heightened military activity as a prelude to a potential major offensive in the upcoming spring months. This escalated tempo is believed to be driven by Moscow's desire to exploit its substantial stockpile of ammunition before the anticipated arrival of U.S. supplies recently approved after a prolonged period of political deliberation. The Institute for the Study of War, ISW, anticipates further short-term setbacks for Ukraine, although it does not foresee any significant strategic defeats. While Russian forces are expected to make considerable tactical gains in the near future, Ukraine's defenses are unlikely to be overwhelmed according to ISW assessments. A critical factor influencing recent battlefield dynamics is Ukraine's quantitative weakness in terms of manpower. Although a new mobilization law is set to take effect next month, aiming to streamline conscription processes, Kiev has been reticent about openly disclosing its manpower needs. 
In contrast, Moscow continues to bolster its forces with increasing numbers of recruits. Rob Lee of the Foreign Policy Research Institute underscores the significance of Russia's manpower advantage, stating that without it, their artillery and air power superiority would not suffice to make substantial gains on the battlefield. The relative disparity in manpower is likely to shape the trajectory of the war, particularly if Russia maintains its recruitment momentum of 20 to 30,000 soldiers per month. This demographic imbalance remains a critical determinant in the evolving dynamics of the conflict.